What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the Canadian educational system. And I'm talking big picture here. I'm talking all the way from a little tiny kid in preschool or kindergarten, grade one, all the way up until college or university, you might call it in America, college and university are essentially the same thing. They mean the same thing. That's different in other parts of the world, I know. And you know, education, kind of an important thing, you know, just slightly kind of an important cornerstone of any civilization. So I'm actually very, very interested to learn more about Canada's educational system and I guess how it compares to America, to be honest. You know, I grew up going to American public school and I turned out all right. I turned out okay, you know. <laughs> so, but seriously, I have a couple videos here that are gonna kind of explain the basics to me, which is really what I think I need. So this should be quite good. Are you interested in studying in Canada and want to know more about how our education system works? I do. Canada is known to have one of the best education systems in the world. Mm. Each of Canada's 13 provinces and territories runs their own school system. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, that is interesting and also what the narrator said first. Canada does have one of the best educational systems in the world. Uh, that's what I've heard. To be honest, I didn't get to experience that, but I have heard that time and time again in, you know, random articles, actually, like, have just read that. So, I know that to be true. It's very impressive. I believe Canada also has a ridiculous amount of the population that, like, has university degrees and higher education as well. Very impressive. Okay, anyway, back, back to the more of the video, though. On a little more detail is each of the provinces having their own school system. Does that actually amount to any kind of noticeable differences? Like, are there noticeable changes and differences in how different provinces run their school districts? Or is that just a technicality? And follows government standards to ensure high quality public education across the country. Yeah. School is mandatory from about the age of six years old to 18 years old. Wait, six? You know, I would have thought, man, well, it's funny. There's a couple funny things about that statement. I would have thought, I mean, you start school much younger than six. Is it not mandatory until you're six? What are you doing uh, those couple of years before that? Just kind of hanging out, playing on the uh, playground slide or something when you should be like, learning how to <laughs> write your ABCs anyway, or maybe you're just learning off of YouTube or something like some of the modern little babies probably are these days learning a lot of childhood education from YouTube actually. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent and uh, the whole mandatory thing, like in America, it's not mandatory that you attend school up. I don't know what age, but like there is a, percentage of the population that drops out of high school and it's not like they're arrested or something so I would think I don't know maybe that's similar in Canada maybe the wording here I'm just taking a little too literally after secondary school students may choose between college and university ah. both education systems help students prepare for their future so college and university are very distinct in Canada they're like there is a there's this distinct difference I should say whereas in America college and university it's basically synonyms that I use interchangeably although there are community colleges which are like two-year degrees which are kind of their own thing okay this is this is interesting here's why a Canadian post-secondary education may be a great choice for your future oh at college okay. Students can get hands-on, practical, or technical skills training for a specific career. Okay. You can study things like graphic design, web development, culinary arts, occupational health, and more. Cool. So college is more of a technical school, we might call it in America, actually. Technical school. Hands-on, like almost like trade skills, in a way. Cool. Cool. I mean... 
that is a difference. In America, you could find these things at, at a, something called a university, to be honest. Colleges often work with employers in different industries to develop oh. the latest curriculum. Yeah, 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 Depending yeah. Depending on your college program, you might study anywhere from one to three years. Nice. When you graduate, you'll receive a certificate or diploma. That's pretty good. You know, a degree in three years or less, that's, I know I mentioned two years degrees. That is a thing in America, but if you can, I guess it kind of depends on if Canada does the whole bachelor degree, associate degree thing. You can get an associate's degree in America in two years, but you really don't find anyone who gets a full bachelor's degree in less than four years. So that's interesting. And the relationship with the employer here and the college, it's very practical, it's very cool, very useful. At university, students often study in-depth theoretical subjects like oh. law, medicine, art history, engineering, and much more. Oh. Depending on your program, you might study anywhere from three to seven years. What? What? Wait. Oh, wait, they're saying already three to seven years. I'm getting a little ahead of myself and I'm talking out my thoughts out loud, so I don't think I made sense <laughs> a moment ago. But uh, yeah, I, I get now the difference between the university and college. Three to seven years. If you're going for, for seven years to a university, do you just, you get a master's degree as well or something more than a bachelor's degree, right? For seven years. Depending on your program, you might study anywhere from three to seven years. Okay. When you graduate, you'll receive a bachelor's, master's, or PhD degree. Okay. In the province of Quebec, the education system is unique. Really? After secondary school, you can attend a Collège d'enseignement général et professionnel, known huh? as Cégep. What? There, you may choose a three-year technical program to prepare you for a job in your field, or a two-year academic program to prepare you for continued studies at university. Really? I was not expecting this. Although I know Quebec is very unique compared to the rest of Canada, not just for the French part, but also for this educational part now. I didn't realize there's like a dedicated institution where you choose just between these two things. Like, I get the technical program, that's like a college, but the two-year academic program it almost reminds me of like an associate's degree in America where you can get it and with the intention of transferring on to a university to get your four-year degree? Why don't they just offer regular four-year degrees in uh, Quebec? Why this specifically two-year program? No matter in which province you study, choosing between college and university depends on your interests and goals. Yeah. Consider this. I like how distinct the two are. Like, you can really, really, like, pin down exactly what kind of career you're going for. Because they're very clearly, like, separated into these two. One, like, practical, hands-on, and one, like, theoretical kind of thing. Oh, it's cool. Knowledge, like, that kind of thing. Education. Although, it's funny that if you're going to be a doctor, you go to the university. Because... Medicine can be like very hands-on and if you're the guy like hacking up someone's shin bone with a saw to break to fix their broken leg That's kind of like being a plumber or something <laughs> kind of getting your hands dirty in a different way. Anyway <laughs> Maybe that's too much detail. Okay, I'm done Canadian colleges and universities offer flexibility if you study at one school and wish to transfer to another you might receive academic credit for courses you've already completed. Nice. Several of Canada's universities appear on well-known university rankings lists. Yeah. Some Canadian college and university programs offer cooperative or work-integrated learning experiences oh. where students alternate between studying in class and working in their field of study. Right, right. This can, I mean, in America, a lot of the time, you're kind of dependent on finding an internship, which is where you go work for a company for free, <laughs> of course. Actually, you can get a paid inter internship. Yeah, it's just about getting hands-on, real-life work experience. So there is a similar kind of thing in Canada and America for that. 
Very good. Some people even choose to attend both college and university. Really? Whatever your choice, Canada is a great place to study. Yeah. For more information about studying in Canada, visit educanada.ca. Wow. That was good. That was helpful. All right. That was a that was a good video to start on actually. I have another short video here just called the levels of education in Canada. We'll see if this has some uh, different information or can just drive home the Canadian educational system to me. In addition to a job market, which is right for the picking, and oh. cities and towns which are ideal for families and individuals to settle in, oh. there is another goal which expats from all over the world have on their minds, and that is free education to permanent residents of Canada. Oh. Canada is known globally for... Like, moving to Canada, becoming a citizen, and getting an education? This is a very specifically targeted video here. Okay. It's quality education. But how does the Canadian education system work? Yeah. Well, here's a breakdown of Canada's four levels of education. Four levels. Elementary school. Primary or elementary school begins at grade one and ends at grade six. Huh, grade one. Inst like how we say first grade and sixth grade, grade one, grade six. Although in America, you'd say kindergarten to fifth grade. And in Canada, you say grade one to grade six. This is gonna get very confusing to me. It's mandatory for all children in Canada. Secondary school. Secondary education in Canada is divided into grade seven for ages 12 and 13. Oh, wow, that's confusing, because sometimes we say secondary education is like college and university in America, like the education after your education, and or we call it middle school, but in Canada you call it secondary education, and it's grade 7, wait, it's just grade 7? 12 and 13 year olds, an entire educational level just for one grade, huh? Okay, we have middle school, which is like 6th grade to 8th grade, basically. And grade 8 for 13 and 14. Oh, 7, okay, <laughs> sorry. Grade 7 and 8, that makes more sense. Still a little smaller than American middle schools. This phase prepares students for high school. High school. High school in Canada is from grade 9 at age 14 and 15 to grade 12 at 17 and 18. Post-secondary Wait, hold up. Hold the phone. High school is two grades as well? Grade 9 and grade 10? And at age 14 and 15 to grade 12 at 17 and- Sorry, okay. I knew I knew I misread that. Grade 9 to grade 12. Okay. That's similar to America as well. Okay, okay. All in all, relatively similar. I'm just gonna- inevitably get mixed up on a few of the details. And I accidentally muted the video. <laughs> post-secondary education. Once okay. students complete high school, they can study for a post-secondary qualification at a college or university. Yeah, I think I have heard post-secondary. Most, maybe most of the time in America, we call it higher education. Actually, maybe that's more common. These programs and courses are not free to permanent residents, but with high standard and low tuition fees compared to their international counterparts. Oh, jeez, don't even get me started. Oh, don't even get me started on how Canada has lower tuition for college and university, especially compared to America. The narrator was kind of saying, especially compared to other parts of the world, he might as well just said America. We all know it. It's crazy. It's wild. It's out of control. You got to take out big loans. It's all true. Um, I don't know. You can also like work a job and to try to pay for college and university. You can get scholarships and uh, kind of financial aid to help you attend university in America. So it's definitely still like very possible and doable. And you can go to like state schools and smaller schools that have lower tuition. You don't have to go to some fancy pants, prestigious university or college to get a great education. So it's definitely like you can find a way to do it in America if you want to do it. Um, but yeah, for many, 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 many people, it is incredibly expensive. 
That is definitely true. These are some of the best options for yourself and your family. In Canada, college refers to community college, technical institution, or applied science school. Okay. The opportunities Canada's education system presents are endless, and by setting your sights on Canadian PR, you can offer your children a world of knowledge. Hmm. If you want to learn more or take your first steps towards a future in Canada... All right, that was good. That was kind of short, but that had some good information, actually. So a little more detailed information. And here, finally, we have a video called Education in Canada, an overview of the primary and secondary school system. Okay. I need all the help I can get with this. Everyone wants a good education for their children. In Canada, sure. school is mandatory for all children between the ages of about 6 and 18. Mandatory. Again, mandatory, like in a perfect world, right? Like, can you, <laughs> what happens if you drop out of high school? Like some, it, that happens to some people, unfortunately. So do they, do they come after you and say, no, 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 mandatory, get back in there. Provinces and territories are responsible for delivering education, so uh -huh. the details about the way it is managed can vary across the country. That'd be interesting to learn about the differences, probably very unique little differences between schools in the different provinces. Education is paid for through taxes. There is no direct fee to register your child for a public school. Yeah. Some parents may decide to register their children in private schools, which they mm. have to pay for. Yeah, America has private schools as well. You pay, and uh, typically like smaller class sizes, more like individualized learning opportunities. So you have to pay, if you want to pay for your child to, to get that kind of opportunity, that's an option. And it's called a private school too. Parents also have the right to teach their children at home. This yeah. is called homeschooling. Right, right, right. Regulations vary between provinces and territories. So be sure to check with your provincial or territorial Ministry of Education. Oh. Okay. The basic levels of schooling are called elementary, middle, and secondary in most what? provinces. Uh, okay, now I'm getting conflicting reports here. See, I'm familiar with elementary school, middle school, but in the video before this one, it was like primary and secondary, right? Oh man, now, I thought I had a grasp on this, now I'm not so sure. Provinces. Many very young children attend preschool before they enter elementary school. Okay, yeah, Canada has preschool before elementary school. I was wondering that, because the narrators have been saying it's not mandatory to go to school until you're six, but most people go to preschool, right? But most children usually begin school when they are between the ages of four and six. Okay. English and French are spoken in communities all across the country. Yeah, that's a huge difference in the education. Um, all Canadians have like a curriculum with French involved, right? I'm pretty sure I know that one. Yeah. Parents have the right to have their child educated in either English or French. Oh. French or English language options may differ depending on the community where you choose to live. Okay. A bit of research will indicate which language is most widely spoken there and what schooling options are available. Okay, well I just want to know, do all Canadians learn some French? Do all Canadians learn? French, like some amount, right? You can easily get by without learning French. Well, that's good for me, but not exactly what I wanted to know. Do all Canadian children learn French? Um, French is taught in Ontario's English language school boards. Well, in Ontario, is French a required language? Huh. What, per what percentage of Canadians know French? 22. That's good to know. Okay. I would imagine most, uh... Canadian schools, like, teach basic French or something, right? Like, in America, we have the option for, like, one to four years, kind of, depending on how far you want to take it. As an American, you can choose uh, to learn 
French, you can learn German. Um, in one school I went to, you could learn Japanese. Um, I've even heard of teaching like some of the old Roman kind of stuff or I don't know. It's very like since, and of course Spanish <laughs> is the one I was desperately trying to think of. Um, Spanish would honestly be the most helpful and that would be what I would encourage people to actually learn in America, kids to learn Spanish. I think in some schools they've even started introducing Spanish at like a much younger age, like kindergarten through fifth grade, basic Spanish in some American curriculums, which I think is fantastic because you want to learn that stuff when you're young. That's when it's like easier to, to learn and stick. Uh, anyway, yeah, I do wish we did more of that, but when I was in school, um, I didn't start learning like another language until I was already like 13, 14 years old, a teenager. And at that point I was hopeless. So yeah. School starts in the morning and finishes in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The exact schedule may vary depending on the school. Students go to school from Monday to Friday. Right. The school year typically begins in late August or early September and ends in June with breaks during the year. Okay. Schools can offer additional or extracurricular activities yes. in which students can participate during and outside of regular school hours. Okay. These activities help children build leadership, physical, and social skills. Okay, that's exactly the same in America. Secondary or high school begins at grade 9 in most areas. That's what I need to remember. Secondary means high school. I need to get that through my head. By the time they complete their schooling, students will have received 12 years of education. They receive a secondary school diploma when they finish. Hmm, yeah. Contact your local school board to get more information and to enroll your child in school. You will need to provide your child's birth certificate. Okay, I don't, I don't necessarily need to know the rest of that at this time about enrolling a child of mine into a Canadian school, but that was a good video as well. Very helpful. Those were good. Those were actually like very helpful and very like high level overview of Canadian education, which is exactly what I needed. Uh, I think that's apparent. And finally here, I just wanted to look at Google and Google the educational system in Canada to see if there's some like fun little facts here that could like, help me out. Canada has a strong, well-funded system of public education. Largely managed province, provincially? Province? Province. Pro, provincially. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that. Um, some aspects can differ between provinces. Okay. Is Canada's education system good? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> Canada is known for offering high-quality education and research opportunities. Nice. How does education system work? In Canada, four stages. Preschool, primary or elementary school, secondary, and post-secondary. All right. That I learned in the videos. Good. Um, what kind of educational system? Kindergarten. Yeah, okay. We kind of learned that. Why is Canada one of the best educational systems? Hmm. Uh, Canada's pedagogy focuses on theater theoretical and practical aspects, and the country is known globally for research infrastructure and facilities. Very nice. This is very positive praise of Canada's education from Google, and uh, for good reason, because it's true. <laughs> Which country is number one in education? Oh, this says United States and puts Canada at four. I wonder what that is, why that would be. Or what this ranking is based on? I don't know. But I guess I'll take it. <laughs> the random Google uh, Q&A thing says that. That means it has to be true, for sure. Why is Canada so highly educated? Canada has a larger share of the population with a college or university credential than any other country in the G7. Exactly. That's what I've heard. That's super impressive. Super good. Like, and also just having a large amount of your population, highly educated, is good for your nation. Like, 
it's just good. It just makes Canada better. So that make it makes sense in so many ways to focus on affordable, high quality education. And that seems to be what Canada has done. So fantastic. I enjoyed this, this lesson today. Very helpful to me. If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things about Canada I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.